the Utah Jazz with a 45 to 17 record are the best team in the league one game ahead of the Suns and today I would like to break down their team strengths and weaknesses. The Jazz are the third best defense in the league led by a defensive player of the year candidate Rudy Gobert and are also third on offense being the only team who are top five in both offense and defensive rating. Though it is debatable who is their most valuable player this season between Gobert and Mitchell, it is obvious that Mitchell is their most important player and safe franchise player. They had three All-Stars this year in Mitchell, Gobert and finally first-time All-Star Mike Conley. During last year's playoffs, there was a sixth seed who were facing the third seed Denver Nuggets. They blew a 3-1 lead and were one Mike Conley shot away from beating the Nuggets. It was one of the best first round series of all time led by Donovan Mitchell and Jamal Murray who were both dropping 50 bombs at each other. Those scars in the playoffs might help the Jazz ahead. In a really quick I'd like to remind all of you to leave a like on this video and do share it with any of your friends who like the Jazz and NBA content and with that out of the way let's move on to the video. There have been three major changes on this Jazz team according to me. They've played with each other longer. This is the same team as last year. Their chemistry is so much better this year and is showing in their game. 2. Mike Conley has figured it out. Mike Conley last year was disappointing to say the least. He looked like he had one of the worst contracts in the league and didn't fit in with the team. The transition from Gasol to Gobert setting the pick wasn't easy at all. But this season, Conley and Gobert's pick and roll is one of the predominant reasons why the Jazz are so much better. When Gobert rolls off the screen, it collapses the defense. They have to decide if they want to guard Gobert, who is one of the best pick and roll finishers in the, in the league, or Conley, who has one of the best floaters in the league. And if a player comes for help defense, Conley is such an amazing playmaker, he finds an open man for the three. And Gobert has improved so much as a playmaker, he also finds the open man, who then rotates the ball to find the open shot. And this leads to the third difference of the Jazz this year. Their three-point attempts. The Jazz this year are attempting a league-high 43.5 three-point attempts per game and are making a second in the league 39% from three. This is an average of 51 points per game only of three-pointers this season. And the main reason they're getting so many good looks is explained before is Rudy Gobert. Everyone on their team who takes a considerable amount of threes this season are shooting above 35% which is league average. Now moving on to their individual players. We've gone so long without talking about the arguably their best player Donald Mitchell. Mitchell is averaging 26.4 points per game and 5 assists per game on below average field goal percentage but above average 3 point percentage. His efficiency should get better over the years as he takes better shots and starts making harder shots. His playmaking has gotten better this year and that should be the next step in him as a player. Mike Conley as mentioned before has gotten better this year with the Jazz and is averaging 16.4 points per game and 6 assists per game on 45, 41 and 85 splits. He made his first All-Star game after a long time this year as mentioned before and has a pick and roll with Gobert which is one of the deadliest in the leagues. Gobert is a defensive player of the year candidate as he is every year. He's averaging 14.4 points per game and 13.5 rebounds per game with an assist and nearly 3 blocks per game on a career high 67.7% field goal efficiency. He's easily the best paint defender in the league and guards basically the entire paint. Though his main improvement as mentioned before is on offense. And another player who's been an important part of this team's success is the walkaway 6th man of the year, Jordan Clarkson. Clarkson is one of the biggest heat check guys in the league. He's been that throughout his career, but this year he's getting hotter more often. He started off the season very hot and was an important reason for their hot streak in the middle of the season. He got hot almost every night and Clarkson, Conley and Mitchell are probably the best guard rotation in the league. And their two other starters, Bogdanovich and Royce O'Neal, are key parts of their rotation. Bogdanovich is a stretch four who's a knockdown shooter and an underrated 15.6 points per game scorer. The games Mitchell hasn't played recently this season, he's taken over in the clutch situation and has actually done really well. They really missed him during last year's playoffs and was the main reason why Mitchell had to go off for 50 every night. Roy O'Neal is their best perimeter defender who takes the hardest assignment every night. He's a 38% 3 point shooter and a very solid 3 and D player. And another very underrated player on the Jazz is the GOAT himself, Joe Ingles. He's a very solid playmaker and a 48% three-point shooter on five attempts per game. I don't know where I heard this, but the perfect way to describe Ingles is a poor man's Jokic, who is shorter of course. 
One last very underrated improvement of the Jazz is their backup center Derek Favors. Last year, they suffered a lot when they didn't have a solid backup for Rudy Gobert. And this year, Favors has filled that role. Though the Jazz have been spectacular in this regular season so far, I have the doubts about them in the playoffs. There are three major reasons behind this. One, during close games, they give the ball to Mitchell a lot. This isn't a knock on Mitchell, but they usually don't win these games. It's an unwritten play in the books that if a game closes, each player has to go to their best player in an isolation play. But I do believe Mitchell can become a better player in the clutch and that the team offense, which is rotating the ball better, is a better play to run in the clutch for them. I still doubt if they can knock down as many threes as they are now in the playoffs. Though them shooting so well, so long proves that this isn't just a hot streak, I don't trust the three in the playoffs. Like we saw with the Rockets in their series against the Warriors in 2019. And one last thing is Rudy Gobert's drop coverage. In their previous game against the Suns, the main reason they lost is due to CP3 and DeAndre Ayton's pick and roll. Gobert's drop coverage was too low and this is a play which has been exploited in the playoffs by other great guards and centers for 2-3 to three years. And I believe the Jazz have won too many problems as of now which doesn't put them in the contender contender category. And this is the reason I have the suns over them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share your thoughts and opinion in the comment section. And do like, share and subscribe for more NBA content.